Hello guys, this is Parents of March 36, and today's video is going to be another weathering tutorial. This time on this kit here, which is the Dragon Panzer IV Aus of H. Pretty sure it's the May 1944 production, but it's the Normandy with the Zimmerit kit. Really nice kit, of course, it's a Dragon Panzer IV and has Zimmerit on it, so it's always really nice. But as you can see, I've painted it up in a not Normandy 1944 way. It's now a little bit later war with the tritonal ambush camouflage pattern on there. Um, the colors of the camouflage, custom mix of Dunkel Gelp, so that's going to be, I think, mostly XF55 and XF60 with a little bit of XF4 in there. And the green on the camouflage is XF13, and the red is NATO Brown. Yes, NATO Brown from Tamiya. Uh, this is back when I was using Tamiya colors instead of AK, but yes, that's the way I'd painted it up. So in this video, I explained the weathering process. Apart from the mud, I'm going to have a separate video on that. It's just the Chipping, streaks, wash, filter, the main like wet wear and tear on the vehicle itself. To start off, the vehicle needed a filter. And I've got a couple of filters here. Mainly I have this one which is the gray for bright green, which you can see is yellow. Then I've got this one here which is tan for tritonal camo, which is more of a brown. And since this is a tritonal camouflage, I use the gray for bright green vehicle one because it's basically dunk gulp. So I basically just put that on to help tone down the colors of the camouflage. So I, I did a little bit of overspray with the base color, the yellow, over top of the camouflage after I sprayed it just to kind of tone it down a little bit. So let's get on to applying that filter. Alright, so next up I'm going to be giving the vehicle an overall wash using this big dark mud wash here. The difference between the filter and the wash is the wash is supposed to be darker and to highlight details and kind of make shadows in the crevices. The, the um, filter just kind of overall tones down the camouflage and kind of fades it down with the yellow. So we're just going to put this wash on over the vehicle. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of streaking uh, with these products here, AK Rust Streaks and AK Winter Streaking Grime. Um, though the way I actually applied the wash, if you saw, I kind of applied it in a streaking motion, so bits where it, it, there's bits and flat sections where it kind of made streaks on its own, like there and there. But yes, I'm going to add some more, not very much, but some more with these two products here from AK Interactive. So now I have some oil paints here that I've left out on the cardboard so the, um, all the linseed oil drains out of them because I'm not putting it on a canvas, I'm putting it on a plastic bottle. So I leave them on here for about a day actually. They're good now, they're nice and 
almost kind of like half dry, which is nice for applying them to the model. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do some kind of rendering or at least kind of fading effects on the turret here. Where I'm, going to just, I'm just going to apply the uh, colors of the oil I have here, which is white, kind of like a dunkel gelb and a bright yellow. Yeah, I just kind of put them on and then work at them with some thinner and kind of just tone them down. I had kind of discoloration effects and yeah, just kind of like see how it goes from there. Alright, now for the exhaust muffler thingy on the back, I'm going to, uh, you see I've already just painted a couple of brown colors, just kind of messily as a base coat. I'm going to cover it with some pigments. I've got three pigments here. I've got MIGS Track Brown, um, this one from Vallejo, which is just burnt umber, which is a little more red. And then I've got MIGS Light Rust, which is, as you can see, quite red, or rusty orange kind of. And uh, I've already used the three of them here on the spare tracks in the front, as you can see kind of mix them up a little bit in different sections just to bring a different kind of like tones to different sections of it. But yes, so first off, just going to do an overall coat of the track brown, the darkest one. Just over the whole thing and then from there we'll use the other two as uh, kind of like highlights or just kind of like modulation of the rusty color. Now for the tools in the vehicle, instead of painting them a metallic color or a wooden color, um, I like to have them kind of the same color as the camouflage because in real life they would just spray the paint over the tools as they're on the vehicle. And then so what I'll do is I'll chip them with the color that they would be. So if it's a metal thing like whatever the heck that is there, I'll chip it with metal. If it's an axe handle, I'll chip it with some wood and I'll chip the head with some metallic color. Uh, yeah, just to kind of make it a little more realistic there. And uh, I've got this color here, which is just a gray. It's the best gray I could find. I think I have a little lighter one somewhere, but yeah, I'm just doing a little bit of light chipping with this along the tools, the metallic ones. First of all, it's just kind of like a light base color. I'll be able to see a little bit already on the uh, the jack block there. A little bit, maybe. It's got a bad angle there, but yeah, just light chipping. Uh, then I'll go back in with some lighter colors, maybe some rust color, and uh, maybe a pencil if I want to make some metallic highlights.
So next I'm going to do some sponge chipping. As you might be able to see, I've already done a little bit with a light, with the light yellow oil color I was using. In certain areas you can probably see around there and there. And here as well. And now I'm going to go over that again with a uh, color from Tamiya. This XF72 Japan Ground Self-Defense Force Brown. And what I do is I just get a little bit of it on the uh, on a little piece of sponge. Like something like this. And then hold on the end of the pair of uh, pliers here, and I can lightly dab it, and it makes a like it makes a pattern that looks like chipping because it's you know ripped sponge. And now I'm doing a little more detail chipping with this tiny brush here and some AK chocolate brown just because it's a nice kind of red brown color. Uh, kind of makes it look like maybe the, um, the underlying primer has been exposed or maybe there's some rust in the chip. So I just take a little bit on the brush and then on edges like maybe this panel here just lightly dab at it until you get a little bit of a chip pattern. And with that, we have completed the weathering, or at least the wear and tear on the vehicle. I'm going to do the mud in a different video. But as far as the washes, the chipping, the streaking, the filters, everything like that is concerned, this vehicle is done. Probably not even going to do any more work on the actual upper bits, just mud and chipping down there, kind of. But as you can see, it's beat up, not super heavily weathered, but it's you know, got streaks, rust, kind of a little bit of rust in some of the chips. But it's definitely seen some use, and the um, filter really toned down the camouflage, brings it together, the streaks and the wash um, does that too. And also the wash helps show the details, obviously, like the Zimrit on the turret and everything there. Yeah, it was just it wasn't very hard to do all this. Only a couple of actual layers of effects, but you know, you just got to know where to put the chips and everything, and then you get a realistic effect. Overall, pleased with it. Hope this um, video helps you guys out with um, weathering your vehicles. You know, this isn't very complicated what I show in this video, but it's just, this is just my kind of standard Panzer weathering. And I'm really pleased with the results, as always. If I'm not pleased, I just do it again, so I'm always pleased in the end. <laughs> but yes, as I said, hope you guys um, find this video useful. Hope it helps you out with your Panzer weathering, or basically any weathering. This is just standard tank weathering if you use the um, at least the effects in that way. But overall, as always, happy with it. And I hope you guys are happy with this video. Hope you guys enjoy it. And I'll be seeing you next time uh, for the mud and whatever other effects I'm going to be doing on the lower bits of the tank. So as always, thanks for watching, guys. This is Panzer My 36, and goodbye.